Measles is back. It's all over the news because we now have cases in Canada and the US and March break just happened, which means a lot of people were traveling and some of those people might have brought measles back with them, which means that we might see a lot more cases in the next few weeks. And we are getting tons of questions about measles on our social channels. So we decided to do a Q&A all about measles with your questions. Let's get into it. So let's start with the basics. What is measles? A lot of people haven't heard of measles or only have a very vague idea of what it is. So it's a virus and it's been around for a long time. It used to be a really big deal. Two million people around the world used to die of measles every year, mostly kids. So parents used to live in fear of this virus. But then a measles vaccine came out in 1963 and it was so effective that cases dropped by over 99% and in a lot of places, including Canada, local transmission stopped completely. Since then, we've usually only had a handful of cases every year, usually brought in by people traveling to other countries. So basically, it's an ancient disease, and that's why a lot of young people have not even heard of it. So the first question is, how does measles spread? So unfortunately, just like COVID, measles spreads through the air, or what we call aerosols. But it's even better at doing that than the virus that causes COVID. In fact, it's one of the most contagious infections we've ever known. If somebody with measles goes into a room and leaves, someone else could walk in and catch measles just from the air in that room two hours later. Before vaccines, each person with measles would spread it to an average of 18 other people, and out of every 10 people exposed to it, nine people would get sick from it. So the next question is, what happens if I get measles? So it's a virus, and initially it feels like any virus. You get a fever, body aches, then a cough, runny nose, stuffy nose, and conjunctivitis, which is red and painful eyes. That's called the prodrome, and that's part of the problem. You're contagious during that period of time, but you probably don't realize it's the measles because it feels like any virus. And that typically lasts two to four days. But after that, you get a rash. That rash starts on the face with these red blotches and bumps, and then it spreads downward and outward. So down the chest and the back and out the arms and the legs. The rash usually starts getting better within 48 hours, and then a few days later, things start to resolve. But even after you get the rash, you are typically contagious for another four days. So here's another one. Why are we making such a fuss about measles when it's a routine infection that everybody used to get in childhood? So it's actually true that almost everyone used to get this in childhood before the vaccines came along. And at that time, it was a routine infection that you really couldn't avoid. But that doesn't mean it was a benign infection. The problem with measles is that it can cause complications. About 30% of people will get some type of complication. That includes things like ear infections or pneumonia, particularly in kids. And that's partly because having this virus seems to weaken our immune system, so we become susceptible to other infections. And the most serious one is encephalitis, or inflammation of the brain. And that can lead to death or to long-term consequences like blindness or deafness. And the chances of having a major complication or dying from measles are anywhere from one to three out of a thousand cases. That is not rare. Now those chances might be better with today's modern medicine and in Western countries, especially where people have access to that care, but there is still a disturbingly high risk of life-changing complications or death. That's why measles is such a big deal. Okay, so how do I know if I've already had the measles vaccine? So the measles vaccine was developed in 1963. And soon after that, they started giving it to kids around the world, including in Canada. By 1983, in Canada, they had packaged it with other vaccines for mumps and rubella, and that's what they call the MMR, or the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. More recently, they added the varicella vaccine to that, so now it's called MMRV. So if you've had an MMR or an MMRV shot, you have had a measles vaccine. The next question is how many doses have you actually had? So one dose is good, it gives you about 93% protection, but two doses is better because it gets you up to 97% protection. Initially, the vaccine was just given as one dose, but when they realized that a higher level of protection was needed, they switched over to two doses. In Canada, that happened in 1996. So since then, kids will typically get one shot at the age of around one, and then a second shot between the ages of four and six. So you can imagine that if you entered school before 1996, which means if you were born in and around 1990 or earlier, there's a good chance you only had one shot of the vaccine. On the other hand, if you were born before 1970, you probably had the measles because it was still around at that time, and you have natural immunity. 
but you may also have had a vaccine dose if you were born between 1963 and 1970. So it's confusing, but all that to say, if you don't have a record, it really can be tricky to figure out your vaccine status. But at the end of the day, the most important question is, how do I know if I need a measles vaccine? So the Public Health Agency of Canada has guidance around vaccination for people who are traveling because measles typically is found in other countries. That being said, the virus is here now too, and like other countries, we are probably going to see some local outbreaks. And if that's the case, you are going to want that same protection even if you're not traveling. So the basic rule is if you were born before 1970, we assume you had the virus, but in case you didn't have it, and even if you did have it, in order to boost your immunity, you have to have had one shot of the vaccine. On the other hand, if you were born after 1970, you have to have had two shots of the vaccine to be considered immune. Now the immunity from these shots lasts a long time, so it's not a concern if you haven't had one recently, but you need to make sure that you've had it. The problem is that a lot of us don't have our vaccine record or people come from other countries where the vaccine was given at a different time or they just don't know if they've gotten it. If that's the case, you can get a blood test to check if you're immune, but that test takes time to come back. So a safe option, if you're not sure, is to just get the shot so you know you're protected. And studies show that there is no risk from getting an extra shot of the measles vaccine. The exception is that people with certain immune conditions and pregnant women cannot get this vaccine. So the next one is, are we going to have an outbreak? So this is one we can't predict. In 2023, Europe had 45 times more cases of measles than they had in 2022. And 2024 is already off to a faster start. There are outbreaks in multiple European countries right now. And this is partly because a lot of people missed their vaccines during the pandemic. So there are more susceptible people around right now. Whether that happens in Canada and the US is partly a function of luck. It's likely that measles has come back to the country after March break travel. But whether we get outbreaks and how big those outbreaks are really will depend on which communities the measles finds its way into. It's thought that we need about 95% vaccine coverage to achieve herd immunity. And in Canada, two dose coverage is probably in the low 80% range. Now, some of our communities have higher coverage, but some communities have much lower coverage. And those are the ones at the highest risk. The big issue is that on average, it's not until two weeks after your measles exposure that you will actually start getting those symptoms. And by then kids will be back in school and unfortunately they can spread it to their classmates if they're not vaccinated. So we won't know the impact from people coming back from March break until several weeks from now. What do I need to do right now? Okay, so check your measles vaccine status. If you have a child, check their vaccine status. And if you're not sure, talk to your doctor. If we do have outbreaks, a lot of people out there will need some type of catch-up vaccination. But remember, the priority is the highest risk people, which is people who were born after 1970, which means they do not have any natural immunity, and people who did not get even a single shot of the vaccine. If that's you, you have no immunity at all, and you need your catch-up vaccine, so go see your doctor, and you can get that shot at any age. So the bottom line is measles is here, it is dangerous, but we have a very safe and effective vaccine for it. If you need it or your child needs it, don't take a risk, get it. If you have questions about measles or any health and science questions, please add them to the comments below and subscribe to the feed.